Hey y'all, welcome to Average Joe Sports. This is your boy Deshaun coming back at you for this week. Um, I'm gonna start it out with a little bit of NASCAR. I know some of you guys are going, what, what in the world y'all won't watch NASCAR for? Because it's fun and it's you know nice background noise. I and also I happen to enjoy it a lot. Go team Hendrick, yeah. Jeff Gore's my boy. Let's do it. Hopefully he can get um he got one win last year, so hopefully he'll get uh get a couple more wins here uh this season as well in the Sprint Cup series. But before we get to that, because the Daytona 500 is in fact going on as we speak after a long rain delay on Sunday. So that's going on right now. It actually took him a long time. It was supposed to start at like, I want to say it was like 9 Eastern in the AM. So it was supposed to start super early, but it kept on raining and now they are racing under the lights and for the first time in the history of the Great American Race, as it's, been, as it's also been dubbed. So, um... Hopefully, you know, Jeff Gore can, get, can pull that out. His car is not exactly working as well as he would like. He's not getting enough speed, so he says. This is also according to uh, what I saw on, on Fox. So, so yeah, he's trying to get it to go. Hopefully, by the time I get done with this, he'll be back in the lead and trying to tear it up. So, uh, hopefully, we can get that going. Woo! Let's get that going, Jeff. Um, going to go back to Saturday's Nationwide Series at Daytona. You want to talk about an epic race. Even if you're not a race fan, you're just a fan of... NASCAR crashes. This was the race for you to watch. Let me tell you, there were about six or seven crashes that happened right towards the end, of, which included the final lap crash, which for to which John Brashear came out came out of the wreckage to uh, to win his first Nationwide Series at Daytona race. So that was, that was you know good on him, uh, Danica Patrick, despite w taking the pole in the Nationwide Series. Uh, wound up crashing out uh, early in the race, so she wound up uh, in the garage. And she was about sixty plus laps down. That's from from what I heard. But she got she got some good laps in, and I think she's going to be fine. I would say over under two wins in the Nationwide Series. She's also racing ten races in the uh, Sprint Cup Series. That um, so she'll be racing with 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 super duper big boys in in that tier just for ten races. She'll probably finish in the top 15, top 20. I think that would be something that would be good for her. If she happens to squeak out a win, great. If not, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm not too worried about it. But I think she'll do fine because the girl can race. I know there's a lot of people out there that say she can't race with the big boys. Yes, she can. Just she's going to need time to get used to get to get to get used to ra racing in, in both style of cars. So you know, here's to hoping that she performs well. I'm not going to hold my breath for any major victories right now. Let's let's wait till like July and see what happens. So enough about the uh, the NASCAR idiom. Uh, we're going to jump down to some Sounders FC. Uh, we we are playing a friendly on the 29th. We've got two Concacaf Championships League games, and then we open uh, the MLS season versus Toronto FC. Should be a close game. Um, my prediction on that was probably going to be a uh, 1-1 tie. Um, these two teams that, from what I've noticed, these two teams actually do play each other relatively clo relatively close, not close. What's wrong with me? Oh my god. Mowage. <laughs> I'm having trouble speaking today. But um, but yeah, I do th I do think that this is going to be, it's going to be a test because it's, it's the first game of the MLS season. And uh, it'll also be the first test for some of the new guys that are coming in. Um we traded away Fusito and one other person for 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 somebody who's who's supposed to be a stud, and I don't have his name on here in my notes. I'm sure my Sounders FC fans out there will remind me. Um, so far, from what I've heard about him, he's got good feet and he's got a, he's got a nose for the goal, which is something that we definitely need. Um, Fusito also had that as well. But I mean, he definitely had his moments. He definitely had his lapses in, in judgment as as well. But um, hopefully, uh, Rosales this season will, will will make will make a full recovery and play for the whole season. I know he had knee issues uh, going in towards the end of the season because that man, when he comes on the field, man, he smells goals, and that's exactly what he wants. Even if it's not him scoring, he finds a way to get the right person the ball, and they can put it back in the old onion basket. And that's what we need. We need to score all the time. We need to score as often as we possibly can. So, 
here's the hoping that that happens. Also, this season, I want to see an improvement in the playoffs. I feel that we are going to make the playoffs. I don't think we'll win the uh, the shield, so to speak. I don't think we'll win our half of the half of the conference, but I do feel that we have a team in place right now that is going to make the playoffs. What I want to see this season is I want to see us win a playoff series. We won a playoff game technically, but we lost by aggregate. So again, and I know there's a lot of people who don't like the playoff system, but hey guys, it is what it is. And that's just that's just what we have to deal with. So I want us to get past the first round of playoffs. And then hopefully that'll get us over the hump and then we can get to possibly an MLS Cup title, which in my opinion is the only thing that matters. I don't care about the US Open Cup anymore. Do I does that mean I don't want us to win another US Open Cup? No, I do want us to win. However, that cup is not the end all be all of US soccer. Our professional cup is the one that we need to focus on. US Open Cup is an, is an amateur cup that also allows professional teams to play. So it's again, it's it's great that we've won three of those in a row, but at the same time, like I said last year, at, actually right after the victory, that it's great, but there's more out there. There's getting that MLS Cup, which is something that we need to get. We have been posterized as the soccer spot. We are kind of the, I hesitate to use the phrase, ground zero. I, I hate that phrase. I know that you know that, that phrase isn't exactly the most positive phrase, but we we are the epicenter. That's the word I want to use. We are the epicenter of soccer. When people talk about MLS soccer, they talk about two places: LA and Seattle. Those are the two places that they talk about. That's what you hear on ESPN. That's what you hear on Fox Soccer Channel when they're not talking about EPL and all the other leagues out there. But that those are the two epicenters, the two hotbeds. Of, of US of US professional soccer and we haven't done our part to 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 win that championship and that's something that we do need so hopefully please Sounders FC do me this one solid and get me a victory in the playoffs by aggregate let's win it out man that's that's what I want to see so here's the hoping that we we can get that done it's a long season you know we gotta you know they're playing like I don't know something like Somewhere in, in upwards to like 50, 60 games over the course of the season. Actually, probably more than that. So, I mean, with, you know, with CONCACAF and the friendlies that we're going to, the international friendlies, which we don't know about just yet, you know, hopefully it's going to be awesome. And hopefully they do that three ticket package like they did with the Man U, with the Man U game. So that'll be epic. But I plan to be at a, at a few of those games this year. So uh, go Sounders, Sounders till I die. Let's get that playoff win. And also along the way, let's win the U.S. Open Cup for a fourth year in a row. Let's do it. Let's get it done. On to Mariners baseball news. Ichiro is going to be batting third this year. I actually think this is a this is actually kind of a brilliant move. And I hope that Ichiro is not taking this as, hey, we don't like you bat batting at the leadoff spot anymore. Therefore, we are making the conscious decision as a as a franchise to move you down to third. Hopefully, he's just like, you know what? I see what we're trying to do. We're trying to get batter. We're trying to get runners on base, and with each with each row always getting contact with the ball, they're gonna have to pitch to him now. And I think, you know, in the past in the past few seasons, you know, I think they realize, you know what? Let's pitch around each row. Let's walk him. Let's try to make him reach for balls that are blatantly out of his reach, and either strike him out or just walk him, and then see. You know, if he beats us on the base pads, he beats us on the base pads. That's that seems to be the way that most teams have been uh, have been thinking this through. So they figure move him down the order a little bit, put him in the number three spot. You know, put you know maybe Ackley in the number two spot, and then have you know and have a decent hitter you know who can get on base you know at, at the leadoff spot. And you know now all of a sudden they have to make a decision: do they walk the first two batters and let Ichiro hit hit two batters in? Or do they pitch to these people and then have to force themselves to pitch to each row? And that's gonna pay. That's gonna play to his advantage, and it's gonna pay dividends over the course of the season. Um, oh, what the hell? I wasn't gonna do baseball predictions in this one, but I will do a pre-pre prediction and then have 
a more solid uh, consensus on what I'm going to say later in, in a later vlog going into the baseball season. I, I'm i going to predict we're going to finish, I, I would say, third. I mean, I, th I think we can get 90-plus wins. I would like to see that. I'm going to I'm going to actually set the bar at 90 wins. That's not going to get you third place, I know, but I'm going to set the bar there cuz uh we have to we have to break 85 wins to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, and I mean break 85 by a lot. Not let's not get 86. I want us to get 90 plus. That's what I'm looking for. Um is it possible we make the playoffs? No. It's not going to happen. I'm not even going to predict that we're going to win the AL West. I think the AL West is uh Texas Oakland, the Texas and Oakland's to lose. I think they're going to be the big teams this year, and um, yeah, I think I think we're going to be just kind of playing, you know, third, fourth fiddle. So I mean, hopefully we don't finish dead last. I just hope we don't finish with the worst record in Major League Baseball. However, next season will be interesting because we are acquiring uh, the Houston Astros uh, next season. There's a, there's a big switch, so that way everything is everything is even. It's it's a weird thing. So next season. The Strohs will be coming up, playing some uh, AL ball, which will be interesting for them because they've been an NL team for so long. They have to get a DH and all that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, and they're just as bad as we are. So, so yeah, here's here's the hoping the next season will be the season after next will be good. But this season, my I'm I'm, I'm gonna set the bar at 90 wins. I think that's a good place to have it. Our pitching staff is is looking is looking pretty good. I. Uh, again, I'm still a, l a little miffed of why we traded our, our our next biggest pitcher to the Yankees for Jesus Montero. I, I don't. I again, I know a lot of people are saying he's going to add a lot of pop. He's a young guy, but he's a catcher, and a catcher is only going to give you enough pop and be as good of a, a good a catcher as he can be until his knees tell him he can't do it anymore. And if he's got a great bat then, and and can move over to DH. And kind of do some part-time work later on in his career. That's great. But listen, I'm not going to put all my money and say he's going to be the greatest thing ever. I'm I'm sorry. It's just, it's just not. We gave up a potential multi-Cy Young winner you know, to, to the Yankees. Which I hate more than anything else. We gave him to the Yankees. I would have rather you given them to Colorado. To a team that, that we don't face on a regular basis. We face the Yankees every year. So... He's going to wind up pitching against us, and he's going to smoke us, and I'm going to be really upset. So, again, that's just that's just my that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people feel the opposite way, and I know a lot of people say, well, you know, there's, no, there's a lot of things people are, people are saying, and they, they're trying to sell me on the fact that this is going to be a good idea. So, I don't like it, but I'm going to take the hardcore fans' word on it, because when it comes to baseball, I am kind of the average fan, slowly but surely getting into it, but hey, you know, Give me, give me some time. I'm still trying to, trying to figure out what indifference is. So you know, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna take me a few years. So, uh, so yeah, go Mariners. Let's get 90 wins. That's what I'm predicting. That's what I'm gonna stick with. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the show for this week. But I gotta do one shout out. Uh, last weekend was the uh, annual Tequila Bowl. That's the high winds and uh. And trumpets versus the low brass and drum line. It's an annual game that we've been playing for eons and eons and eons. So since before my buddy Shunky was born, I don't even know. I'm just, I'm just playing with you, dog. I love you. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, they the the low brass and percussion, also known as Team Tits, pulled out the 20, 20 to nineteen victory. At least that's what I think what the score was. But it was a very very close game. First win in nine years since. I was a rookie in Husky Band, and I was the quarterback. It was awesome. I think we won that game six to nothing because we didn't kick a field goal because it was like at the end of the game. So it was awesome. So uh, congratulations on your win. I don't have to have stats because who cares about marching band football stats? I mean, really, it would be like umpteen million interceptions and some fumbles and, and all and all that good fun stuff. But uh, it's it's a, it's a fun game and. Uh, I'm just glad that we finally got a win. Uh, <laughs> I was like, is it going to be a decade before we actually get this win? So, uh, so yeah, great job, Team Tits. Love you guys, and uh, you guys are champions today. Enjoy. Big shout out. Uh, see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.